Welcome to City Hills Church Online, and hey, happy 4th of July. This is always a truly special day, and I don't know about you, but it kind of feels a little weird that it's falling on a Sunday, but that's just kind of how the calendar works. And man, we're, we're excited about today, and, and here's the deal. I know there's a long way for us to go as a country, and we're still working through so many different things, and nothing's ever perfect, but guys, we are blessed. I have been to so many other countries, throughout the world and and the reality is God has blessed us and so it's our responsibility to make sure we understand that and we continue to press forward and, and help just draw our nation and pray that our nation just connects even deeper with God's heart with God's will that we lean into those things but man we are blessed. So I hope you have a blast today just celebrating. Hopefully you can find some fireworks somewhere, take the kids out, have a really, really good time. And if you legally shoot off fireworks, I'm not judging you. I'm just a little bit jealous. That's all I'm saying. I hope that you have an awesome time. But listen, hey, if you're new here with us, we just want to let you know how honored we are that you're hanging out with us today, especially on a unique day like this, like 4th of July. For you to be here, it means a lot to us. And we only ask one thing. We just want to connect with you. So just let us know you're here in the comments below. Let us know where you're watching from. And we just want to have the opportunity to meet you and just get to hear your story a little bit better. Maybe go grab coffee or go hang out someday. But we just want to let you know that we're honored that you're here with us today. Hey, just one quick announcement before we jump into our speaker today. Next Sunday, we're back in person. Finally, right? We've been online for the last couple weeks as we've kind of worked through some things and you guys have allowed us as a family to be able to go and, and lay my dad to rest in, in his home island of Utila. And uh, it was, it's was it been a, a special time for our family to be able to do that and connect. And it's amazing to see what God's doing through this trip already. And I know that there's gonna be incredible stories for us to tell of, of how lives are being changed from our time there. but. Next Sunday, we're back in person. We'll be able to hang out. We'll get to see your beautiful faces, your smiling faces, and we cannot wait to see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. in person and online. So we, we just cannot wait for that to happen. But today, the speaker is not really a guest. She's family. It's Mary Henderson, and she's gonna be sharing with us on I Give Up Being Stuck. We've all been in those places, those seasons of life where we feel stuck. And I believe that God, she told me a few weeks ago before we even talked about her speaking, God had given her this message. And I said, hey, we're gonna be in the series and I'd love for you to speak on this day. And she's like, I already got the message. God gave it to me a couple weeks ago and it's just been dealing with it in my heart. And man, it's, it's so, so good. So I can't wait for you. To hear it. So I'm not going to hold you up anymore. Let's sing together and then we'll jump right into the message. And I know that God has something special for you. I'll see you guys at the end. And we just want to sing about your faithfulness, your goodness towards us this morning, Father. never failed me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God if you know would you sing it this morning with me say oh my you have been faithful Close like no other I've known you 
as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful Yes, you have sing together. All my life you have been faithful. Thank you, God. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Father, as we lift our hands to you this morning, we thank you for your faithfulness, for the love that you pour over us day after day, Father. We are standing here this morning knowing that we are loved, that we are cared for by you, that no matter what the circumstance may be in our lives right now, you are with us and you are for us. That no matter what may come our way, we serve a God that is able, a Father that loves us just as we are. And we thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Would you put your hands together this morning and celebrate the name of Jesus? Would you turn to your neighbor and greet them this morning? Welcome them to the house of God.
Well, good morning and welcome to City Hills Church Online. We're so excited to have you guys. Hey, it is 4th of July. I hope you guys are having such a great time. You're out and about the beach, the pool, barbecuing. We wish you guys a, a happy and safe one. But I love that this message is falling on this day because I really want to talk to you about freedom. And so as we continue in our summer series, Something's Got to Give. Today we are giving up being stuck. So let's talk about how we can have a life of freedom. So most of you know the story of me and my husband, Bud. We moved here from New Orleans, been there pretty much all of our lives, and we owned restaurants. And one of the really cool things that we got to do as a restaurant was cater these really great events. And our favorite one by far were the Mardi Gras parties. And so the, the people in these crews that they call them, you know, prepare all year long and it all leads up to this one day, the day of their parade. And it's an all day event. It's an all day event for us as well, cooking and preparing and so forth. Um, and then we, we greet them at the end of a very long parade day with hot, delicious food. And, and then we just sit back and watch them party. Honestly, I wanted to show a couple of videos through the years of this just to give you a, a visual, but you know, for, <laughs> for the respect of the people, I won't. But let me tell you, we have seen some sights. It, it is quite a, it's quite an evening. But for us to get our equipment there, we would always have to rent a U-Haul. And usually we would rent one about 16 foot and it fit everything. But because it was raining all that weekend, Bud had this great idea. He says, don't get the 16 foot one. Go ahead and rent a 26 foot one. And then we will have some, you know, kind of shelter from the rain as we do what we have to do outside. Well, it was a great idea there for a while until we had to maneuver through the tiny streets of the French Quarter. And we, we got that done. We thought we might've taken down some historic buildings on the way, but it's okay. Just don't tell anyone in New Orleans. But we still had to traverse that dark, you know, hour and a half ride out to the country where my parents and, and uh, my family have a big piece of land. And that's where our shed is that we keep all of this equipment. So it rained all day. And uh, we got there about two, three o'clock in the morning, back the big bus <laughs> up to the shed and, you know, with the, the plan to unload it in the morning. Well, as you can imagine, as it rained and rained and rained with all of our heavy equipment inside of this truck, it just sank deeper and deeper into what was now a huge mud pile. So I don't know if you've ever been stuck in mud. There's this um, frustration that comes about and you just keep hitting that accelerator and just keep spinning those wheels and you're just sure that any minute, if you could just steer it in the right direction, if you could just hit that gas hard enough, you're gonna catch and, and get yourself out of this mess. And needless to say, Bud was not amused and you know he said, we will never do that again. But um, that's what I wanna talk to you about, how to get unstuck. And so I was thinking about this, you know, we've talked before, you know that one of my favorite scriptures is in the Psalm 139, but I love it because it just applies to so many things in our life. The basic idea that God can see our life from the beginning to the end. He can see when we're going to get unstuck, but more importantly, he knows how to get us unstuck. So here's our first truth for this morning. Long before you face a problem, God already has a plan. And why is that? How is it that he knows that? Because he's got this incredible view of our life from beginning to end. So again, kind of thinking about Mardi Gras, if you're not familiar with it, you know, some of these parades have, you know, 20, 30, 50, 60 floats. It's an all day thing. And for the spectators, it's really cool. You, you kind of pick a spot that you and your family meet at. And sometimes you're, you're, you've been in that spot for years and years and years. And um, you camp out with everything that you're going to need. And it's an all day thing. It takes hours for some of these uh, parades to go by. And 
So I was thinking about, you know, our perspective when we're watching a parade. You know, we can easily see what has passed in front of us and, and definitely can see clearly the float or the marching band or whatever it is it is, you know, that's right in front of us. But what's coming next, we really only have a glimpse of. But you see, if we were to bring a drone and lift it up high enough, think about that perspective. That drone could see the beginning of the parade all the way to the end and everything in between. And that's really what God is to us. He can see it in one snapshot. He can see the entire thing. And so as we lean into him and trust in him, we, we know that he can see what we can't. So let me ask you a question. Are you stuck today? Are there areas in your life that you feel like you're just spinning your wheels in, in that muddy ground, spinning, you're hitting the accelerator, there's urgency, there's, there's, <laughs> there's frustration, you know, but you're just not getting anywhere. Is it your finances? Is it habits, you know, that you just can't seem to stop? Is it a mindset or an attitude that you, you have been, you feel like you've been this way all of your life and, and you're helpless um, to try to get out of it? Is it a relationship that you're not sure how to make things right? There's so many areas that we can feel stuck in. So I want to help us today. I want to read to you from um, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. I really pray that this is going to be the beginning of, of something that will give you the tools that you need to help you going forward. So listen to this. God declares that he is doing a new thing. He says, do not cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for this new thing I'm going to do. It's already happening. You can see it now. Listen to this. This is my favorite part of the scripture. God says, I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there. Now, let's just break that down for just a second. The important thing to note here is that, okay, so think about a wilderness. This is what God is talking about. Think about that area of your life that you're stuck in as a wilderness. Heavy vegetation, no sunlight is coming through. There's no way for us to walk this path. It is dark. We're lost. We can't see in front of us. And here comes God with this promise. I am going to clear a path and make a road that was not there before. Let's just take that part of it because that's so important. God can give you that, um, that freedom to find that road that was not there before, that solution that we just could not get to on our own because he's got this great bird's eye view of the beginning and the end. But there's something more that I want you to see here. For a road to be cleared, think about a wilderness and, and a bulldozer just, you know, flying through this wilderness and this heavy vegetation. What has to happen? Things have to be cleared away and taken down and removed. So I think the question for us as we start to think about the areas that we're stuck in, what is it that we need to allow God to clear away and remove in our lives? What attitudes do we need to change and let him just take out of, of, of our lifestyle that would help us in those times, in those areas where we're stuck? So I love the idea of this, that God had a solution that was not there before. He is clearing away a path. He is making something happen that was not there before. And how does he do it? Again, because he can see it from beginning to end. He sees when you're walking into that wilderness. He sees that area that you're about to get stuck on. He can see that big 26 foot truck, you know, sitting all night in, in a rainstorm and he knew what was going to happen, right? He knows how to get us clear from those things. So reading that verse again makes me think about the opposite of a living stream of water. Because the end of that, and we'll get to in just a minute, is 
I'm going to clear a path, he says in Isaiah, and I'm going to give you living streams of water there. So let's talk about that. When you think about a living, flowing, fresh stream of water, think about the opposite of that for a minute though, right? And that's standing water. Think about a pond. There's no flowing water. There's algae buildup there. Mosquitoes are, you know, uh, are, are infesting it. Animals aren't drinking from it. There's nothing living there. There's no fish there usually. There's no life there because there's no inlet of fresh water. That's why they say, you know, if you're lost out in, out in the wild, you know, you don't drink from standing water. It's usually contaminated. But think about the opposite of that. Think about a living stream of water, a river that's flowing. When I think of that, I think of fresh water that I can have. Um, life, you know, it's teeming with, with fish for sustenance and for food. And because it's clean, it's clean, it's clean enough for me to even, you know, get in and get cleansed. And that's really what God is, is wanting to show us today through this. Think about this truth. Even in our wilderness, God can give us everything that we need and provide us with fresh streams of water. I love the idea of that. The second part of that uh, last verse, I will give you fresh streams of water there. Not at the end of the wilderness. I'll be waiting for you with a cool glass of, of cold water. In the wilderness, I will give you streams of water. It just, it's such an amazing thing to think about God in that way. Jesus said in John 7, 38, he who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. When we rely on God and trust in him, our lives will be a natural overflow of that living water that lives in us. So how do we get unstuck and find freedom? Got three truths for you for the last few minutes that we're together here that I pray will help. So the first one is this, God knows where you are. And you know, that may seem very simplistic, but there's really depth to it when you think of it. Because how many times have you felt like, um, God doesn't see me, he's forgotten about me, and nothing could be further from the truth. He sees you, he knows exactly where you are. He also knows that this place of frustration for you can also be a place of transformation. It's in this place that we truly have to wait, stop, and listen for his guidance because he can see what we can't see. I'm reading the book Gentle and Lowly by an author named Dane Ortland. And for me, it has just brought a fresh and a deeper sense of who Jesus is. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a new believer for just two weeks or two decades. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit can give us fresh understanding, a deeper understanding of who Jesus is. And the author talks about this in, in the book. He says, you know, Jesus doesn't just love us. Jesus is love. He doesn't just have mercy on us. He is mercy. And that's such an incredible thing for us to, to even begin to fathom of who he is. So as I was taking notes in the book and slowly reading through this and highlighting so many things, something came to me and, and I thought about this, you know, from my own life experiences and from those from other believers. Sometimes Jesus falls into one of two categories for us. The first one is that we bring him down to our level to the point where we think that he thinks the way we do. And his limitations are our limitations. And because we bring him down sort of to our level, he, it, we render him powerless to help in our lives because we won't even go to him. If I can't figure this out, you know, if, if I can't see what needs to be done, you know, I don't know what Jesus can do because, you know, I, I think he thinks just like me. I know that that sounds, you know, strange, but honestly, we do that without even thinking about it. We, we bring him down to our level, and then we don't think he can help. Or the second is just equally as bad. We, we feel in our heart that we can't reach out to him 
because he's repulsed by our sin, by, by our shortcomings, by those wilderness experiences. We think that he's going to say, really, Mary, again? <laughs> you know, again with this? You're stuck in that mud here again? And nothing could be further from the truth. So listen to what the author really gives us um, the truth that we can feel about these two um, very wrong ways of thinking. The heart of Jesus is this, with all the authority and power of heaven, again, giving him, giving him that glory that we sometimes forget and bring him down to our level, but with all of the authority of heaven, all the power of heaven, Jesus reaches down to us as we're covered in mud, as we're frustrated, and he lovingly cleans us and offers us his rest. It really is just that simple. He doesn't have to manufacture love for us. He is love. He doesn't have to dig deep and say, oh, I gotta find more mercy for Mary today. He is mercy. So the second thought that I wanna share with you today is he is preparing and transforming us to do his work. So even though I may feel stuck in a situation where I'm spinning my wheels and not going anywhere, it doesn't mean that I'm hopeless. Because if we choose to trust God, we will then begin to sow faith. And as we sow faith, fear is, is, is released. It's gone. It has to disappear. They, they can't really stay in one heart. And as we let go of fear, our purpose will start to surface. So if you're wondering, yeah, I just have been stuck in this place. I don't know that I'm making a difference anywhere. What exactly does my life mean? Am I changing lives? Am I helping anyone around me? Am I impacting my world? You see, in this spot, there's so much trust required of us. There really is. But trust that God has our best in mind, that he is not enjoying watching us struggle, and that he has the answer if we would just stop pushing and pulling and ask for his help. And that makes me think about my two girls. We still have not quite figured out what, uh, what vocation they're going to go after because they're so multi-talented. Well, one of the things that they do is they get rope from wherever they can find it, and they start making these intricate pulley systems where they're tying one side to the hammock and the other side to their bikes. And there's a, there's a, there's a pulley system with a bucket that goes back and forth and Barbies are taking rides and it's like a gondola thing. And other times they're, they're, they're setting a trap for who, I don't know. Sometimes I'm scared when I'm there with them by myself. It's like, or who are you trying to trap here? It's this intricate right now, as we speak, our back door to our garage is completely covered in rope and string and, and, and tied to so many places. And yeah, I feel sorry for anyone trying to break into our backyard right now. But the fun part is when <laughs> they, they're tired of this and they want whatever they've tied up in there loosened. And I, you know, I'm, I'm literally standing next to them and they're pushing and pulling and they're trying to take this knot out and they're, oh, and they're growling and, you know, and it's like, honey, I'm, I'm right here. I'm standing right here. I see where the problem is. Just step aside and, and let me help. No, I've, I've almost got it, Mimi. I've almost got it. And they're, and they're making the knot tighter and they're frustrated and the sweat's pouring down their face. And I'm standing next to them saying, I see the problem if you will just let me step in. And we do that with God, don't we? It's like God is just patiently waiting for us to invite him along in this journey. And the last one that I want to tell you about that I hope will, and pray will help you is God has put these purposes in our life for now. For, for what we want to do in our lives now, he is the one who placed them there. So as I listen to his guidance, I can notice the things that start to break my heart, the things that make me tear up. As I'm listening for his guidance and looking for those purposes, as, as I'm, I'm getting unstuck from these areas and turning my life and turning those knots and, and muddy places over to him, I can start to hear his voice of what my purposes are. 
and what is it that he can do in my life going forward. So as we think about those things, those things that move us to action, those things that, that move us deeply, as we start to notice those things, how do they line up with the gifts and the talents that we have? And, you know, we could go on with that for, for a long time here and give, giving, you know, um, examples. But the fact is, each of us is so very different. You know, for, for me in my life, it's, you know, it's this journey going forward now. This next part of my life, this next chapter, you know, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm really listening to those things that I feel strongly about. Because most often, they are connected to my purposes. They're connected to those giftings that God has for me. How do I put those things together? How do I use what God has given me uh, to make an impact in my world and find those purposes? And I love the fact that even in the midst of those wilderness times, even in those muddy, knotted up times, God can show his purpose. In fact, it's in those times sometimes that we can, is, is the easiest place for us to turn our, our, our trust over to God to, to start showing those purposes. They become very clear when the mud settles and the knot is unloosed, we can start to see clearly what God has for us. Psalm 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go, and I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. If you've ever thought for a second that God is not caring and he's not watching and he doesn't know what's going on with you, let this psalm settle deep in your heart. He wants to guide because he's watching you with that loving eye. He, he loves us in, in ways we can't even we can't even fathom. So we can't ever give up discovering our purpose, even in the midst of these things, because that desire was placed there by God. But you see, we have to keep our eyes on the one that knows the way for us to go. I want to end with this scripture. Isaiah 40 and 29. It's one that I have read so many times in those, in those challenging seasons where I felt like, I am knee deep, you know, and sinking fast in, in that mud. And I don't have the power and the strength to go forward. Isaiah 40 and 29 says, He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not go, grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I love, love, love this scripture. If you're feeling weary, you're tired from spinning those wheels. You don't see that area changing. You don't see those mindsets changing. Know that God has a plan. He can clear a path in that wilderness. He can give you the provision that you need from those streams of living water in the midst of that wilderness. His loving eye is on you. And when we come out on the other side, even though we are weary, we are tired, we are frustrated, God can give us the strength like eagles and make us soar. We see it over and over again in the story of Jesus in the four Gospels. It's the four first books in the New Testament for those of you who are new to studying the Bible. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is an account of his story from his closest friends. Those who walked with him every day of the roughly three and a half years that he was here. Listen to their story about him over and over and over again. He was never repulsed by the crowd who was broken and hurting and hopeless and helpless. His heart leaned into them. In fact, his heart broke every time he saw people that were, were in those helpless situations. He was actually drawn to them. Don't listen to the lies that he is repulsed by you and your muddy, situations that you seem to continue getting yourself in and stuck in. He is drawn to the helpless. He is drawn to us in those situations. Remember, he doesn't just love you. 
he is love. And that is the savior that is waiting for you today to invite him into the journey, to invite him in. He's standing right next to you saying, just let it go, let it loose, put it down and let me, let me heal it, let me fix it. Let me see what I can do to fix this problem because I already know how. I have already made a plan. And so I, I pray that this challenge for you today will help you in knowing God is there. He loves you more than you can possibly imagine. And he has already made a way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you love us so deeply, that you are love, that you are mercy, that Jesus, you embody all of these things. We turn over to you today, those muddy places, those knotted up areas, Lord, that we don't know how to get out of. Whatever the mindset is that I have in all of those places today, Father, I turn them over to the one that I can trust, that the one that I know has a, a a perspective that I can't see, that you can see from beginning to end, and that you have already made a way. Father, we invite you into those places today, and we thank you so much. We thank you for that love. We thank you that we can trust you, and we praise you and give you all honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Wow, what a powerful and perfectly timed message. I mean, who would have thought we would be talking about freedom on the day that we're celebrating freedom? Like only God knew the timing of how that was going to work out. But wow, just an incredible message on how we can not be stuck anymore. Find that freedom that God has for our lives. Listen, we've all had those seasons. We've all had those moments where we felt stuck. Those moments where we felt like we we're in this waiting room that would never end. And while the enemy of your soul and the enemy of your purpose wants to whisper to you and yell in your ear at times that there's no reason behind this, that you're stuck and, and you're never going to get out of it, the truth is God never wastes a season. God never wastes a moment. And my prayer and my challenge for you today is that you would not get so caught up in getting out before you let God do what he needs to within that you would allow God to heal what he needs to so you can have that freedom that you need from the inside out. And it's amazing what God will do through those seasons of feeling stuck, those seasons of waiting, those seasons where it feels like you're on the treadmill and you're just, you're getting all this energy out, but you're not moving forward. It's in those seasons that God does some of his greatest work within you. So before you're so desperate to get out, make sure God has done what he needs to within so that you can be free from the things that are holding you back from your purpose. Man, what a great, great day and a great message. As we wrap up today, we just wanna thank you as always for your generosity. Thank you for how you just continue to partner with us, how you just pour into the ministries of this church, how you come alongside of us so that we can reach the community and we can connect people with Jesus. We, we say all the time that we're here for the 94% of our city, our county, that does not have a place to call home, a church family that they can call when they're in need, when they feel stuck, when they need to find that freedom. 94% of our county and our community. And so thank you. Thank you for partnering with us so that we can continue to do everything we can to reach out and connect people with Jesus. It means more than you could ever know. Hey guys, as we wrap up today, we just want to remind you next Sunday in person, 10 a.m. Cannot wait to see you. Cannot wait to hug you, give you a high five, a fist bump. If we haven't met you yet, we may hug you. I'm sorry, we, we just like people and we cannot wait to see you in person next Sunday at 10 a.m. as we continue our Something's Gotta Give series. It's gonna be a really special day and we can't wait to hang out with you. Hey guys, have an incredible week. Have an incredible day. Go blow something up for us. Celebrate, it is gonna be a fun, fun day. We love you guys.